The Chicago Bears are set to go ahead and play the Las Vegas Raiders tomorrow, and Tyson Badgett is set to be the starting quarterback. What will we see from Tyson Badgett? Will the offense set him up? Will Lou Getzey set him up to succeed? We shall see. And then we're going to dive into the mailbag so we can go ahead and show some love to our greatest fans in the world. Y'all know we're going to get into it, but you got to. You got to hear that music first. I tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Chicago Bears Central. It's just me today. Bobby C-Dub is out. He had to take care of some personal stuff. So you just got me on today's episode and mailbag. But hey, you can go ahead and follow the show right off the top at Chicago Bears Central on all social media platforms. And make sure you leave us a like because we are the number one spot for all Chicago Bears news and updates. But hey, Tyson Badgett, my guy, undrafted rookie. What will he look like versus the Las Vegas Raiders? The Las Vegas Raiders, to be honest, hopefully good. I'm not going to sit there and lie to you. Hopefully Tyson Badgett is a guy that can come out there and look good simply because I want the team to win. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not going to get into who's the better stuff between him and Justin Fields. We know that Justin Fields is out right now. So I'm going to go ahead and cheer for the guy that's at the helm and who's going to hold things down until Justin Fields returns. As of right now, I'm thinking like this. The offense should be able to get the ball out quick. That should be the game plan. That's what absolutely needs to be the game plan. Get the, th get the ball out quick. And so and make it easier so this guy can get in rhythm because what have we seen with the Chicago Bears? Excuse me. Last week, we seen dysfunction. This dysfunction. And I know that Tyson Badger came out and he said, hey, Lou Getze, don't hinder the offense. I know the book. I know the playbook. Call the game how you want to call the game. And that's what we've been telling him all season long. But at the end of the day. We just want to see Tyson Badger go out there and feed the receivers. We know that he has some type of rapport with Tyler Scott. I expect Tyler Scott to get his. I expect DJ Moore to get his. As long as Lou Getzey puts this young guy in the right position to succeed. We want to see this young guy at least go out there and be competent. Because there are some people on, on one side that say, hey, Tyson Badger, he's going to get the ball out fast. He's going to make uh, good decisions. He's going to be poised in the pocket, et cetera, et cetera. And then on the flip side, it's going to be like, hey, Tyson Badger is in there. We don't want the kid to see, but we're going to absolutely see Lou Getty as an offensive coordinator be pushed on the forefront and say, hey, he is the problem. He is the problem. So at the end of the day, I just want to see Tyson Badger go out there and give the Bears a chance to win. You know what I'm saying? Like I say just about every week for the quarterback. Now, first with Justin Fields, now with Tyson Badger. Don't be the reason we lose the game. That's it. Don't be the reason we lose the game. Take care of the football. Make your throws. You know the playbook. Hey, it's going to be some mistakes here and there. But then let's think about the next play. If you make a bad play, if you have a bad play, okay, rinse it out. We're going to move on to the very next play. And honestly, I want to see how this kid plays. That's just how I'm looking at it. I mean, the man, his father is a 17-time arm wrestling champ. They ain't got nothing to do with him, but. Hey, I seen a funny clip with the daddy on that doing this thing. And hey, you know what I'm saying? The, the bro strong. Bro strong. He, yeah. But Tyson Badger, just go out there and let's make sure we have a solid game. Y'all let me know how y'all think Tyson Badger is going to look. I know it's going to be some arguments on both sides. I'm not getting into that. I want the Bears to win. I'm tired of losing. I know y'all tired of losing. We just need a win. I don't care how you do it. Just win. And I hope the game plan is much, much better. I really do. Because there is no way you knew that the Vikings were going to blitz and you still didn't plan for the blitz. You know that the Raiders just seen what the Vikings did. So I, I would expect the Raiders are going to blitz. And if they don't blitz, that's on them. They ain't got nothing to do with us. That's just how I'm looking at it. But I want to go ahead and start to get into these mail bags to show y'all why y'all are the greatest fans in the world. Even when we suck, it's okay. It's okay, ladies and gentlemen, but hey, time to get into the mailbag. This first one here is from my guy, Fred. Hey, what's up, man? 
Cognac Boys, Bobby C. Dub. Shout out to Steve O's well too, man. This your boy Fred, man. Man, this has been a rocky, long ass season, man. First, my man Justin Fields get hurt. Then they up here like thinking, oh, Tyson Bajan is the savior. But I've noticed though in that game when he came in, it was like Lou Gessy, you start making plays for him and having him roll out and everything. It goes to tell me that I think Lou Gessy got a little racist up in him and he needs to be fucking fired. You know what I'm saying? Cause why would you sit here and want to sabotage Justin Fields? But then when Bajan get in, you open up the playbook for him and let him do his thing and see through them picks in that game against Minnesota or whatever, though, and fumble the ball. But I, I'm just looking forward to the offseason, man, because at this point, I don't even think the Bears can turn this motherfucking season around because we got two idiot coaches that don't know what the fuck they doing. And they should have got fired after the Minnesota game if you want to be technical because them motherfuckers, man, like, they just don't have no passion, no drive. And I hope Ryan Poles do hire, you know what I'm saying, some coaches that competent, that know what the fuck they doing, and they can, you know what I'm saying, have Phil get to that next level that where he should be at this season, though. But when you got a bitch-ass coach like Luke Getty and Matt Eberflus lying asses, like, what's the point having them on the team? And on top of that, like, the defense, I mean, they've been playing okay, but the defense ain't been doing so great as well like that because they should be getting to, to the quarterback more often, though, especially with the, you know what I'm saying, the line we got as well, too, man. I can't wait till we get rid of Justin Jones because he's trash. You know what I'm saying? At this point, I'm I'm, I'm over Jalen Johnson as well and Eddie Jackson because every time Eddie play, he'll, he'll give us at least, what, maybe four picks, and then he get hurt. And it's like, what are we keeping them for? That's dead weight. You know what I'm saying? But I want to know, man, have, have y'all fellas heard the rumor saying that uh, somebody want to battle uh, Chicago Bears? That's, a, that's somebody who had told me in my job. I don't know how true it is. I didn't know if they hear nothing about it, though, but he was telling me this while I was at work. So let me know what y'all think, man. You think these cocksuckers going to get these, this win against the Raiders? Because if they don't get this win against the Raiders, they might as well just look to the offseason, look to clean house, and to, you know, be that damn team that they I know they can be. Because they got the talent. The talent is there. It's the fucking coaches. It's the problem. So I hope they keep Justin Fields so they can shut this uh, talk up about uh, Caleb Williams. Because Caleb Williams, to me, he's all right, but he ain't better than Justin Fields to me, in my opinion, though. Let me know what y'all think, man. Chicago up, bear down or nothing. Shout out to Fred for the voicemail. And I'm with you, man. It's a lot of talent around this team on both sides of the ball. Is it a perfect team? Absolutely not. Do they still have their issues? Absolutely, they do. And um, you talk a lot about Lou Getz, you know, his stuff right there. And I just, the biggest thing when it comes down to Lou Getz for me is, yo, players seem like they don't understand the assignments. On all the All-22 breakdown film that I've seen from former quarterbacks and former quarterback uh, coaches, <laughs> offensive coaches, your offensive linemen seem like they don't know what the hell the calls are. And then now, you find some type of cohesion with Tevin Jenkins at the left guard, and you realize that Cody Whitehair is absolute ass or swamp booty, and you still are going into this game against the Raiders looking to start Cody Whitehair and Lucas Patrick. Lucas Patrick at center, Cody Whitehair at the left guard. Makes no sense. Nate Davis is out, so now you want to go ahead and put Tevin Jenkins to the right guard. Why do we continuously move these guys around, bro? Make it make sense. It don't. And the, and the biggest thing is that these guys have to get it done. And when you talk about the defense, Fred, I got to keep it a buck with you. The last three weeks, they've been all right. After the, uh, I will say, or the first half of Denver, solid. Second half, bad. Then the game, the last two games, they've been on par. It's the offense. How did, how... The offense seemed like we moving up in the right direction. The defense seemed like it was trying to catch up. The defense finally catch up, and the offense takes three steps back. It doesn't make sense, and it speaks to what exactly you just said. The coaching staff sucks. There's no way around it. No way around it, bro. And that's just what it come down to. But thanks for supporting the channel, Fred. You already know we can't have no mailbag without hearing you snap on these bozos. It is what it is. But now we move on. The next voicemail is coming up from my guy, 
Greg O. Here it is. What, <clears throat> excuse me, what's up, Chicago Bears Central? Talk to my boy Hayes, Bobby, C Dub, Steve O, and Big Cab. Hey, listen, man, it's your boy Greg O. I just got one thing to say. I'm listening to uh, Bobby and C uh, uh, Dub talk about uh, Justin Fields. Um, unfortunately, made uh, made for what is, I, I agree with his line that it's all about. He don't know if Justin Fields may need surgery and he's on the only table off the table bullshit. I don't even care. I'm gonna tell you how this I am with the uh, Chicago Bears right now. I don't want Justin Fields to come back. Justin Fields. Chicago, the Bears would never do right by a quarterback of that caliber. We had an opportunity to get, and I'm talking about in, in, in the preseason, I mean, before the season, last year when they got Matt Eberflus. You know who was still out there as far as coaches that were available? At that time, um, I think it was the uh, Miami Dolphins coach. Now, I could be wrong, but these are the coaches that were hired during that time frame. The Vikings choke coach, the Miami Dolphins coach, uh, Tom Flores, who was let go and whatever that crap. Airbnb. So what I'm saying is that any of those coaches, any of them, would have been a better head coach for Chicago Bears with a talent like Justin Fields. You get a, a – man, he's been exposed. Matt Eiffel is a second-rate-ass coach. Lou Gatsy never been a uh, coordinator, but he cut his teeth on a Aaron Rodgers-type player. Totally different skill set. I keep hearing this thing about maybe they should trade Justin Fields to Atlanta. I'm all for it. Get him out of this kid's gonna get destroyed. Get him back down there in Georgia where he's from, where they look like they can appreciate a talent like him. So this dude can do, he can have a career. Chicago Bears gonna fuck this young boy's career up. It's gonna be the type of injuries that linger. The scheme is never gonna be fit. And you know what, honestly? Tyson Badgett might be all right. I don't give a fuck. I'm at a point right now, man, I am going to stop rooting for the Chicago Bears. I'm tired of this is a second-rate organization. They don't deserve us as fans. So that's my take. As always, Chicago. All right. So shout-out to Grego, man. You talked a lot about the coaches, man. And I think that when you talk about the coaches that Ryan Poles could have selected within his list that was reportedly given to him, it was Matt Eberflus, Dan Quinn, and Jim Codwell. If you was asking me, hey, I'm going with the experienced guy. The guy that has a repetition, I mean, a reputation, <laughs> a reputation of being solid on the offensive side of the ball. I believe the Detroit Kitty Cats pushed him out of the way too early. And he was the he was their last successful coach, I believe, in the season he was fired. He was 10 and 6. So I think he would have been probably been a better candidate than Matt Eberflus. But Ryan Pose elected to go against Eberflus. He went and got Eberflus. Me, I would have kind of pushed off, maybe. If if I was ranking the three uh coaches reported that had some type of interest for the job, for the coaching job, I would have ranked Jim Codwell first, Dan Quinn, and then Matt Eberflus. Simply because you needed you you needed some type of direction for your team. You needed a guy that was going to be able to hold guys accountable, and I believe Jim Codwell is that. He would have taken Justin Fields and knew what he needed and been surrounding him with more offensive uh, experience than what Matt Eberflus did. We came into the season, we're like, hold on, Matt Eberflus? He went out and got Luke Gatsy, former Packer, and Allen Williams, two guys who has never caught uh, two, you know, guys that never really had success as coordinators within the NFL. So it was a bit shaky from the start. If we keeping it a buck, a first time head coach and you got a first time offensive coordinator. No, that doesn't make sense. You're supposed to bring in guys that you can lean on for their experience within the NFL. So yeah, but instead of doing that, 
they go get a they go get a young guy from the ops in Green Bay, and it seemed like every time he plays Green Bay, it seemed like he's calling plays against us to support and help Green Bay win. Double agent activity. But it is what it is, man. At this point, we got to sit here and roll with the punches and say, hey, remain Bears fans, but not be happy about it because on Mondays we wake up pissed off. So we'll see how we wake up this Monday after tomorrow's game. But thanks for calling in, Grego. This next voicemail is from Jerry. What's up, y'all? This is Jerry, big fan of the show. Um, appreciate y'all, everything that you do. But uh, I got a question. I got a question. Has what? What's up with everybody giving up on fields so fast? You know, um, honestly, I feel like if we went the Caleb Williams route, we'd be enduring the same thing for the next three to four years. Um, I feel like we know what we got in field, and I just feel like he hasn't been given an opportunity to really shine. I watched I've, I watched the film on the on the Vikings games, and everybody wants to clown him for not changing the protection or whatever. And I'm like, okay, you try, like like I get, I understand, and I'm I'm a, I'm watching these plays, and it's clear as day that they're about a blitz, but it honestly seems like Justin Fields was coached to not make any adjustments because it's weird because we've seen him uh switch protections before to block to, to stop the blitz and, and uh to bring in extra pass rushers and, or pass blockers i mean and whatnot but like this game he, he just completely didn't do that and it, it just it just seems so uncharacteristic that like to me that has to be like a coaching point in there like like i don't know i don't know how you could just sit there and blame that all on field, because that, that's just weird. I've never seen a quarterback play like that a day in my life. But um, another thing, too, everybody's mad that uh, that uh, oh, that first play of the game that he didn't hit DJ Moore on the backside. If you look at the play, he, start, he starts his read from the opposite side of the field of DJ Moore. To me, on that play, I think DJ Moore was his last read. And that, and that goes back to coaching. Why is DJ Moore your last read? That should be your first read every time. The man put up 230 yards in the game. That should be your first read every time. Like, I don't know. I Honestly, I'm, I'm to the point. I think Getsy is sabotaging this team, man. Like, it, it's crazy. And, and what are we waiting for on flu? Spider-Man. There's, no, there's nothing else to wait for to see if he can prove himself. That man needs to be gone. I know, like, we, don't have, we wouldn't have anybody to take his place, but, but golly. I'm, I'm to the point where Staley the Bear might be a better head coach than fucking Everfoot. But man, yeah, I just wanted to call. I just wanted to see what your thoughts on uh, the whole Justin Fields situation is. I hope uh, Chicago hasn't given up on him yet. Um, I don't think going. I don't think resetting the rookie QB market would be a really good idea, especially with everything that uh, Williams is asking for. So um, we'll see. We'll see how this season shapes out. Justin Fields is my guy till the end. I already know. I know that kid is talented. That kid could be electric. That kid will be legendary. I promise you put him in the right situation, and he will. All right, Jerry, it's a three-minute max on your calls, man. It automatically shuts you out if you go extend it, uh, extend your call over three minutes. But thanks for calling in and supporting. But, hey, the people giving up on Justin Fields is fine. You know what I'm saying? They got their reasons, and I'm going to go ahead and give it to them. But I will argue this. Why is it? that Justin Fields is receiving all this backlash and former players that has played with him or played for this organization has said, what the hell are y'all doing with him? Lance Briggs came out and uh, spoke in, uh, in favor of Justin Fields. Kyle Long came out and spoke on behalf of Justin Fields. Uh, Fontaine just came out and said Justin Fields is not the issue, and he was just in the locker room, my guy. He was just in the locker room. He was just in the locker room. And this is what we're hearing from former players that just play with Justin Fields or former players that play with any organization that said, hey, why the hell will we go out and get Caleb Williams if you still have problems in the trenches and you have a, a bevy of picks this upcoming draft to build out this team for him, we seen what he's capable of, but we have not put him in the best positions. You talk about uh, some of the plays that was called. 
if you go watch the QB school who breaks down all 22, and then you watch uh my other guy, god damn, he do uh 670 to score every now and then. Tim Jenkins, his all 22. Great break. These guys break down film greatly. And if you watch a number of plays, the offensive line, Justin Fields is making the correct calls, but the offensive line, you either got guys, it's it's a tale of two things. You got guys moving in opposite directions, or you got guys literally blocking their own players. Cody White here blocking his own player uh, and getting the, the colors purple and blue confused. Letting guys run right past them. Guys missing assignments. That's a coaching issue. That's an offensive line not being good enough issue. You got to build out the trenches. If you want to reset the rookie clock, okay, what the hell whoop de do? But what is the infrastructure and the support around said quarterback, whoever that is? It's not good enough right now. Luke Getze is not good enough right now. You didn't change your game plan until your damn quarterback thumb was dislocated, bro. You didn't do anything. In the two games to where you scored over 30 points against the Broncos and the Commanders, you moved the pocket. These guys were coming out in cover zero looks. For 72% of the game, they sent pressure. You did nothing. Nothing. All your success came on with moving the pocket the previous two games, and you revert back to that bullshit. I'm going to leave it at that. It's unacceptable, bro, and I'm with you. Floose, he barbecue chicken. Get him out of here. All right, y'all, mini rant. But now we back on to the regular schedule program. I'm right here. I got this message from a guy who didn't leave his name, but he is from the 872. Here it is. Hi, I wanted to leave a voicemail. I love what you guys do, and I just got to I just got to I just got to get this off my phone. One second, son. So, Matt Eberflus was the McCaskey's choice. Ryan Pose didn't have a choice when he got hired on a coach. They had Matt Eberflus as the person, the pick that they wanted for the Chicago Bears. Matt Eberflus goes and he says, hey, this is the best person I think will be the, the offensive coordinator since I'm a defensive-minded coach. He gets Luke Getty. Luke Getty gets Equinemia St. Brown, injury prone. He gets Lucas St. Patrick, injury prone. I don't know where Cody Whitehair comes from, but he's been injury prone. Both of these cats can't snap the ball. All the people I mentioned are injury prone. Let's not – look. Tyson Bajan. Who is Tyson Bajan? Tyson Bajan is someone that Luke Gessie brought in because he coached him in the senior bowl. Like, the people that are sabotaging Justin Fields, JF1, our first black quarterback at Chicago, the people that are sabotaging him are from the Green Bay Packers, are from, are from, are from organizations who never cared about the Bears. And on top of that, there are trying to – actively sabotage Ryan Poe's career and Justin Fields' career. And it's 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 despicable. At this point, as a Bears fan, I'm I'm just I'm 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 saddened at what I'm seeing and I have to call in, leave a voicemail, man. Love what you guys do over there at Chicago Bears Central man. Um uh, uh my name's Ken Bear Down. All right, so that was from Kim. My bad guy, guy. Didn't catch it at the end there. But, hey, we got it now. Better now than never, homebrew. But shout out to you, man. And I think it's just frustrating, man. It's very, very frustrating because we came in with so much excitement for this season. And it seemed like these head coaches can't get their head out their ass. The head coach is he tripping. He His hair always slicked back. Looking like a, uh, the, the, I say that he's a great, he should have a career change and become a politician the way he always finessing in line at the damn podium. For real, just keep it a buck. And then Lou Getze, you got, you, you come out here and you, and you tell us what, what needs to happen. And then you go do the opposite. And then Matt Eberflus goes out and say, we plays to the quarterback strengths. Since when? Since when? For two games? For two games. 
And then you go in the Vikings game, a very, very winnable game, and you can't sit there and hold your offensive coordinator accountable for what? Why? Why you couldn't do it? It's just unacceptable, and I'm with you. Stop hiring ops. That's why if the Bears do hire this guy and they look for somebody else, look, I love what Ben Johnson can do, but I don't want none of the ops coordinators coming over here no more. Not right now. Not right now. I think it's some other uh, candidates you can look at. You can look at Waldron over there in Seattle. You can maybe look at Eric B. Enemy or, you know, some other guys. But right now, eh, let's stay away from the opposing uh, rivals, uh, players, and and the coaches. I don't want nothing to do with them. Keep it a buck with you. But after all that, I want to end on a positive note. This last one here is from Tyrese, man. Cognac boys, what up? It's Tyrese, man. I just wanted to call in on this depressing Sunday after this loss that we just took. And I want to do something different. I want to give out shout-outs today. I want to shout-out Tyson Bajan, you know, for coming in and showing the Justin Field haters that it's not the quarterback. It's actually the system. You know what I'm saying? It's Luke Getsy that's doing all this dumbass shit. But fuck all that. Now, shout-out to the defense. And the main shout-out goes to the linebackers, the, the $90 million linebackers that we got. You know what I'm saying? They played their best game of the season. You know, and um, also I want to give a big-ass shout-out to the defense for holding them to, like, 13 points because it looks like we're starting to look better and better on defense, and now we're regressing because we're going back to the same motherfucking cutlass, gussy-ass play calling again. I ain't going to linger too much on this game. You know, I just wanted to get a defense, a big old shout-out, and I wanted to give our linebackers a shout-out because they finally played up for their money potential. And um, shout-out to King Book, Barry, the rest of the guys that call in. Shout-out to you guys, the Cognac boys, man. You know, we all love the show. I'm glad you give us a place to vent to where the other people around that's watching could get a chance to hear some of our thoughts. And, man, I just want to say much respect to you guys. Even though this is a depressing-ass loss, we still might end up with something big in the draft. And it's sad that we're talking about the draft six weeks into it, but that's just the way of the world right now. Chicago up, better fuck down. Well, shout out to you, Tyrese, and shout out to everybody that's always calling in. We tuning in. We locked in as a family, even during the wins and most definitely during the losses as we stick together and pan together and try to hold this organization accountable. So shout out to y'all for wanting to be better and we deserve to be better. And we got to put the, the, the fire to this Bears organization's ass because we've been bad for too long. So I'm going to end it on that note. Y'all make sure y'all hit the like button. Make sure you follow the show on all social media platforms at Chicago Bears Central. And if you want to be a part of an episode like this, that number is 773-242-9336. The way we going to always end it from the number one spot for your Chicago Bears, Chicago up, bear down, because we all the way down. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, break, media.